In this video, we're going to complete example one. It says Ben borrowed $8,000 from the bank. He was charged an interest rate of 5% per annum, compounded annually, and he makes regular repayments of $1,000 at the end of every year. Calculate how much he owes the bank after four years. Now, we're going to go through two methods. One method I call the common sense method. Anyone who has a good understanding of loans and how to calculate percentages can just use common sense to solve something like this. The next method is called the formula method, which you're going to notice is exactly the same as the common sense method. But before we get into this, I need to talk to you about the best way to increase something by a percentage. To explore this, I'll make up just a quick example. Let's say we have $300. And we want to increase the $300 by, let's say, 5%, because that's the percentage we're using in example one. How would we do this? Well, first of all, we need to convert our 5% to a decimal. And we do this when we divide it by 100. 5 divide 100 is 0 0.05. And a lot of people don't need to divide by 100. They just look at 5% and they know that it's 0 0.05 when written as a decimal. So what we can do is we can take our 0 0.05 and multiply it by our $300. What's that going to give us? 0 0.05 times 300 equals 15. So we get a value of $15. So if we are increasing by this amount, then we take our 300, we increase it by the $15, and we now have $315. Now, the problem with this method I've just shown you is it takes two steps. When we look at example one, we've got to increase by a percentage four times. This can take us quite a while to do, so we want to cut back our calculations as much as we possibly can. So how are we going to do that? Some of you might remember many videos ago where I mentioned you could add 1 to your decimal. This gives us 1.05. What can we do with that? Well, what's 1.05 multiplied by our value of $300? Let's bring up our calculator. One 0.05 times 300 equals 315 dollars and what you'll notice is we've done the exact same calculation as we did here but we did it in only one step let's use that for example one let's start with how much ben owes the bank he owes the bank eight thousand dollars that's how much he borrowed and this is at the beginning of the loan. So we'll write that down, $8,000. And next to it, I'm going to use a little bit of notation that comes from our formula. And I'm going to write that V with a subscript of zero equals $8,000. That just means that the value of the loan after zero years or at the beginning of the loan is $8,000. Now we need to calculate how much he owes the bank after four years, but you need to do it one year at a time. So we'll start by finding what he owes after one year. V1 meaning the value of the loan after one year. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the previous result, which is $8,000, and we're going to increase it by 5%. And the reason we're doing that is because our interest is 5%. We've got to add this onto the loan. Now, we mentioned before that you need to take this percentage and divide it by 100 so that your interest rate is written as a decimal, 0 0.05. And when you increase by 5%, we like to add 1 to this, giving us 1.05 because it means that we can do our calculation in one step rather than two. So we're going to take our 8,000 and we're going to times it by 1.05 
because that will increase 8,000 by 5%. It will add the interest onto it. We're also told that he makes regular repayments of $1,000 at the end of every year. And this is actually quite important. And we'll do an example later where it says at the beginning of every year. If it had said that they do it at the beginning of every year, then you would have actually subtracted your repayment of $1,000 here at V0 because zero represented the beginning of the year. So we're going to subtract our repayment at V1 because V1 represents the end of year one. V1 can also represent the beginning of year two. But we'll talk about this more in depth later on. So what do we get when we make this calculation? 8,000 times 1.05, this increases it by 5%, we're now at 8,400. And then we subtract 1,000, we subtract our repayment. And we end up at $7,400. All right, so that's V1, that's the end of the first year. What about V2, the end of the second year? Well, remember that this is a recurrence relation which means that we need to use the previous result to make our calculations here. So we've got to take our $7,400, increase it by 5%, add 5% interest on, and then subtract our repayment of $1,000. Now the rest of the calculations remain the same. To increase by 5%, we multiply by 1.05. To make our repayment, we subtract our $1,000. So we can see that everything stays the same in our calculations except for the amount at the beginning. What are we going to get this time? 7,400 times 1.05 minus our $1,000 repayment. And it comes to 6,770. 6,770 dollars. Let's now move to V3. Once again, we need to use the previous result to make our calculation. 6,770, we increase this by 5%, we add our interest of 5%, and we take away our repayment of $1,000. Times 1.05 minus our repayment of 1000 we get $6,108.50. And we're going to need some room here. All right, V4, which is the value after four years, we take our previous result, $6,108.50, we increase it by 5%, or we add on interest of 5%, and we take away our repayment of $1,000. Times 1.05 minus 1,000. You kind of notice as you progress, it gets quicker and easier. And we're left with $5,413.93. All right, so we're now going to look at our formula here, and we're going to see how it relates to the common sense method. So I'm going to start by writing it down the way they've written it. V n plus 1 equals V with a subscript of n. I know what R is, and I know what capital D is. Lowercase r is 0 0.05. We have that written up here. And capital D is our repayment, $1,000. So I'm going to replace them. I'm going to go 1 plus r, 0 0.05, in brackets. And I'm going to subtract my repayment of $1,000. Now let's focus on the brackets for a second. What's 1 plus 0 0.05? Well, that's going to give us 1.05. That's exactly what we did earlier. We added 1 to 0.05. Our equation now looks like this. Vn plus 1 equals Vn times 1.05 minus 1,000. Now, I hope this looks really familiar because in our common sense method, we kept multiplying by 1.05 and subtracting 1,000. And that's what we see in our formula. 
Let's now solve this problem using the formula method. We'll start with V0, which is the beginning. At the beginning, we owed $8,000. Sorry, Ben owed $8,000. Now let's calculate V1, which is the value of the loan after one year. We can see that V1 has gone in place of Vn plus 1. So I want you to think about this. If Vn plus 1 equals V1, what would Vn equal? And if we look at it and think, what does n equal here? What number plus 1 will give me 1? Well, 0 plus 1 equals 1. So n has to be 0. Vn must be V0. Let's look back at our formula here. If Vn plus 1 is V1, then Vn is V0. And we just write down the numbers as they are. Times 1.05 minus 1000. Now, this Vn plus 1 and this Vn is what really confuses people. All you really need to know is that whatever the subscript is for Vn plus 1, Vn is going to be 1 less than that. So if Vn plus 1 is really V10, then Vn will be V9. If we have V18, then over here, V17. If it's V20, over here, it's V19. All they're really trying to say is that our subscript over here is 1 less than the subscript over here. And that's all you really need to know. Just like here where we've got V1, and then over here, our subscript is one less. It's V0. So where do we move from here? Well, we know what V0 is. It's $8,000. So we can come down here and go V1 equals $8,000 times 1.05 minus 1,000. If you look to the left, our calculation for V1 here and our common sense method is exactly the same as our calculation using the formula method. So we're going to get the exact same solution. We're going to get $7,400. So I'm going to make some room and I'm going to finish this off using the formula method. So if we're going to find V2, we know that on the right, it's going to have a subscript one less than that. It's going to be V1. And that the numbers stay the same. It stays as 1.05 and our repayment stays as 1,000. What do we do now? Well, we know V1. V1 is 7,400. So we're going to replace V1 with 7,400. We're going to multiply it by 1.05, sorry. And we're going to subtract 1,000. We can see that our calculation here for V2 is exactly the same as the common sense method once again. So we know that it's going to come out as $6,770 for V2. Let's now move on to V3. In fact, let's take some shortcuts. We know that this is going to be V2. We know this because each time the subscript on the right is one less than the subscript on the left. And we know V2 is $6,770. So we can write it as that straight away. We know that we multiply by 1.05 every time and we subtract a thousand every time. And this calculation for V3 is exactly the same as the calculation on the left. So we're going to get the same amount. $6,108.50. And finally, to find V4, we know that on the right here it will be V3 which is $6,108.50. So we're going to write it straight in there. $6,108.50. We're going to times this by 1.05, and we're going to subtract 1,000. And we know that it's the same as the calculations on the left, so our final solution will be the same. It will be $5,413.93. And we have now calculated how much he owes the bank after four years using two methods. 
And that concludes our video on example one. Rem remember to read the description below for links to workbooklets that relate to this video.